Hello crafty friends, welcome to another Stamping September bonus video. Today I am going to be using this grungy film strip negative camera themed stamp set to add some visual texture to these scraps of white mixed media card. These are left over from a previous project and as I've done in previous white scrap videos, I use some washi tape to stick them all together so that I can work on them as if they were one big piece of paper. I find this a really useful approach to using up my white scraps because I can create one large thing and then break it down into small things, use some of it and then put some of the other bits that I've made in my box of backgrounds and bits for use at a later date when I haven't got the time or the energy to create a piece of mixed media. It's all there ready to go and I use up my white scraps so I don't have loads of those hanging around. So as I said at the beginning, I'm mostly using these stamps to create visual texture on my white scraps. I started with a grungy film strip and I used archival ink in sepia and I chose archival ink for two reasons. The first reason is that these stamps are made from silicone and archival ink is the best ink for these. I find of the inks that I have, other inks might work well as well, but of the inks that I have, archival inks are the best for a good clean crisp image with silicone stamps and the second reason is that I wanted my stamping to be waterproof. I planned on doing some smushing over the top of this stamping and I didn't want the stamping to dissolve in the water and ink that I was going to apply so archival inks are permanent waterproof inks so that's why I chose them. After I finished stamping the first grungy film strip, I stamped another one using coffee archival ink. And then I used plum archival ink on a third grungy film strip. So I've got lots of visual texture going on and all the colours are similarly muted browns and a dark dusky purple. After I finished with that third grungy stamp, I used a word stamp from the stamp set. It says a film type and I stamped this in Stazon, which is my permanent black ink. I don't have the archival black ink. I've got Stazon instead. And I use that to do multi-generation stamping all over just to add a bit of text to the background. So multi-generation stamping, if you don't know, is where you ink up your stamp, you stamp it, and then without re-inking it, you stamp it again and again and again until there's no ink left on your stamp. So you get lots of different intensities of your stamped image or words. Once my archival ink was dry, I decided it was time to do the smushing. So I took Victorian velvet, which is a very dusky pink, and I always love to use this on this kind of vintagey, distressed, grungy piece. I think it just works. It's got that feel. So I smushed that on my mat, squirted it with some water to create a paint, and then used my smusher to smush it all over. And when I was happy, I dried it with my hairdryer. Then I took some aged mahogany, Distress Oxide. I'm using the reinker here because I don't have the ink pad. I put a couple of drops on my mat, squirted it with water to make a paint again, picked it up with my smusher and smushed it all over, but not quite as much as I did with Victorian velvet because I wanted the Victorian velvet to peek through. And then again, I did the same thing, but I used antique linen, again, a re because I haven't got the ink pad for this. And then to marry everything together, I put a bit of white acrylic paint on my glass mat, used my brayer to pick it up, and then brayered on a very thin layer of white paint. And this binds everything together. It pushes everything back into one layer, so it all looks like it's meant to be together. You don't have to do this, but it's something I often do because it seems to bring everything together. Once that was done and dried, I spattered on some very dark copper metallic paint using a paintbrush. This palette is my Hybrid Prima Metallic Accents palette. I took my favourites from the original palette, my favourites from the pastel palette and put them both in the same palette so they were easily accessible. 
and then I dried that with my hair dryer to make sure the whole thing was really dry and once it was I took the washi tape off the back and now I've got six little pieces of mixed media. I chose two to work with today and the other four as I said earlier are going in my box of backgrounds and bits to be used at a later date. In keeping with my camera film theme, I took two Polaroid style frame dies and cut two Polaroid style frames out of my mixed media pieces. And my plan was to layer the larger one on top of the smaller one like this. On the stamp set there are a couple of icons, there's an old fashioned camera and a film roll so I decided to stamp those on smooth white cardstock in archival ink. I used the sepia for the camera and coffee for the film roll. I used my stamp positioner to stamp these because I knew that I might not get perfect impressions first time and using a stamp positioner just means you can stamp over and over again in the same place until you get the kind of impression you're looking for. Once I stamped them both in archival ink I stamped them again in Versamark sticky ink and then I dipped them in clear embossing powder and heated them with my heat tool so that they had a slightly dimensional glossy finish and that just helps them stand out a bit from the mixed media pieces that I created that subtle difference in texture and shine helps them stand apart. After the embossing powder had set and cooled, I cut them out with my detail scissors, leaving a little white border around the edge of the images. And then I took an embossing tool and ran this around the cut edges. This just bevels the edge, slightly curves the edge, and it makes it look a little bit neater, almost as if the piece has been cut with a die rather than with scissors. And I think it gives a little bit more of a finished look. Speaking of finished looks, I felt my frames needed a little bit of something, a little bit of definition. So I took some Walnut Stain Distress Oxide and a Finger Dauber and just added ever such a slight dark vignette around the inside and outside edges of both Polaroid frames and called them done. Then it was time to start assembling my card. I used matte gel medium on the back of the small frame to adhere it to my card. My card is smooth white cardstock with a panel of smooth white cardstock on the front so there's a little white border all the way around. I put my small frame over to the left hand side, pressed it down with a bit of non-stick deli paper. And then I added some thin craft foam to the back of the larger frame so that it had a bit of dimension so you got a bit of depth going on there and I layered that on at a jaunty angle over the small frame. I then stuck the film down, I used a bit of matte gel medium on the back of that so that's flat like the small frame and then I added the camera to the large frame. I put a bit of foam underneath the top of the camera where it needed some support and under the legs of the camera I just added some matte gel medium because that was going to be in contact with the frame. For my sentiment I chose a happy birthday. I stamped it in the sepia archival ink and die cut it out with a stitched rectangle die. I placed this on the frames over to the left because that created a visual triangle with the camera and the film. And as a finishing touch, I wanted to bring in some bling, so I used three little copper nouveau drops in each frame. And that's this card finished. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do check out the Stamping September playlist. I will leave a link up in the eye and down in the video description. You can also find all my playlists on my channel page. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I will see you back here tomorrow for my next Stamping September video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.